Your discretion is advised. Jason Garrett, Cowboys 2011. Yeah, are you shocked to see the clapper on here just like me? Also, did you forget that he kicked off his 10-year run of constant 8-8s eight and eights as an interim coach? Garrett, the former Princeton QB who also played for the Cowboys, took over the 2011 squad after Wade Phillips started 1-7. Jerry being too loyal again. Garrett stepped in from his role as OC and promptly beat his former team, the Giants, 33-20 and would finish his interim tenure with a 5-3 record as the team finished out the year 6-10. and 10. This would kick off an inexplicable love affair between Jerry Jones and the ginger hand slapper as Garrett would be hired full-time to roam the sidelines and frustrate Cowboys fans in amazing ways for the next decade. He went 8-8 eight and eight in his first and last season in the D, winning two playoff games in a tenure that can only be described as strange, something Cowboys fans are used to. It's hard to believe that Jerry World, also fittingly named the Death Star, which gets blown up at the end of every Star Wars movie, is already 15 years old. At the time it was open, the two TVs above the field were the largest in the world, but since then have been surpassed by other stadiums. A modern marvel of engineering and construction, renovations and additions are on the horizon. And now they're doing a $300 million renovation to it, and it's still crazy. They told me, so you know, like the big board, like the big video board that sometimes get hit mm -hmm. by like, punts and all that stuff. You could still fit the Statue of Liberty at the 50 yard line and it wouldn't touch that. The only thing that could make it slightly better is if they had those headquarters a little bit closer. Like if you could go to the star, because that- Yeah, the star is out in Frisco, yeah. Holy crap, that, that's an amazing space. But the stadium itself, like they have that area that a lot of teams are now copying where you can watch like the team run out. So like they mm -hmm. have so many things that are like exclusive for fans, but it's just such a massive space and it looks like it could have been built last year. 21 Rowdy. It's a good thing mascots can't talk because I'm sure this one would have something obnoxious to say about it being their year or constantly bringing up the early 90s. It's also perplexing to me that they even have a mascot. When you go to a Cowboys game, you have so many distractions like cheerleaders and actual people dressed up like Rowdy. He's so boring as a mascot. There's a commercial of him filing his taxes. Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys have shown remarkable stability at quarterbacks since their inception, but there have been a handful of stinkers in between the legends. Yeah, sandwiched between Aikman and Romo, they couldn't quite find their footing. And one of those stop gaps was Vinny Testaverde, who had a strong career, just not in Dallas. 17 touchdowns and a league high 20 interceptions in 2004. Vinny was so slow, he was a literal pillar of salt. Yes, literally. Dallas Cowboys, Luis Zendejas. I'm very tempted to give this to Brett Maher, who famously shanked four extra points in a playoff win for the Cowboys back in the 2022 wildcard round. Then missed another for good measure a week later. What happened in that game? Yeah, but Brett Maher was a good regular season kicker at least. Instead, let's single out Luis Zendejas, who tried 16 kicks over three years in Dallas and made just nine of them. So Zendaya would have been better than Zendaya. The Dallas Cowboys, Donovan McNabb. Though Eli Manning had a great record in Jerry World, Donovan McNabb was actually 12 and eight versus the Cowboys in his career. And one loss records can't really define how much Cowboy fans hated McNabb as Donovan had huge moments like this 14 second scramble that just made them curse their TVs or devices or whatever you're watching this on. He also brought back his best friend T.O. and Eagles Green and absolutely shit on them. Tough scene. Speaking of the Dallas Cowboys, Greg Hardy is and should be hated for his penchant for domestic violence. It's no wonder why the Cowboys immediately cut him when they found out. Just kidding, that all happened before the Cowboys signed him to a one year, $11 million deal. And yeah, they knew about it. Dallas fans with a conscience, both of them were rightfully upset and for good reason. The Dal Ass Cowboys. Dak Prescott. Another year, same Cowboys. They haven't made a conference championship game since 1995, so the pressure on the starting quarterback to get this extremely annoying and extremely overrated sports franchise back into the Final Four is always there. Dak had a tremendous opportunity last season to end the Cowboys conference championship drought, but he pooped all over himself in San Francisco. I think Dak has proven for the most part to be a pretty good regular season quarterback, but in 
in terms of the postseason, he hasn't done anything. Just like his predecessor, Tony Romo. Until the Cowboys make it to a conference championship game or a Super Bowl, or better yet, win another Super Bowl, Dak Prescott will always have a very high prove-it rating. To me, I say he's about an 8.5 out of Dallas Cowboys, Micah Parsons. Fleece Johnson might be an absolute weirdo and somebody I would not trust my kids around, but my God, can he play football. I think by the end of his career, he will be the greatest player to never play in a conference championship game. That is, if he plays with Dallas his entire career. He's going to be a mainstay on these all-pro teams for years to come just because he's a monster. And yet, I will enjoy watching his face as the Cowboys fall short every single year in early January. Honorable mention goes to Zach Martin, who is the best guard in the league of the last decade and will be a Hall of Famer someday. He continues to produce at a high level and also failed to make the conference championship. Dallas Cowboys 2017 Taco Charlton. Taco spent just two years with the Cowboys before going to Miami. Miss. 2018 Leighton Van Der Esch. The real life version of Thad Castle looked to be a future superstar after his rookie year, but injuries had halted that. Still, he's a solid player, but not what he could have been. Mid. 2020 CeeDee Lamb. Lamb has developed into a very good receiver. Hit. 2021 Micah Parsons. The biggest fucking weirdo in the NFL, but he's also one of the best players in the NFL. Hit. 2022, Tyler Smith. Smith had a very solid rookie season. Thus far, he looks like he's going to be a hit. All these hits and they still can't make a conference championship game. That's disgusting. Dallas Cowboys, Tyron Smith. Same as last year's edition of this video. Smith hasn't played more than 13 games in the season since 2015. And while he's never been the most durable, the last three years have really taken it to another level. He missed 14 games three years ago, six games two years ago, ago and 13 games last year. Despite this, he's still one of the most popular offensive linemen in the league as a byproduct of playing for the Cowboys. I guess you could say when he's healthy, he's still good, but the problem is he's never healthy. And you know what they say, the best ability is availability. Dallas Cowboys, 1971 Roger Staubach. This was actually one of the toughest ones because the Cowboys are interesting. When they've won their Super Bowls, their quarterback stats really weren't that imposing or overwhelming, but guys like Tony Romo and Dak Prescott have come in and put up great individual regular season numbers and failed to even make a conference championship game. I almost went with Troy Aikman in 1992, but in the end, I went with 71 Staubach because he went 13-0 in his starts, including the postseason, and ended up winning Super Bowl MVP when he threw for two touchdowns against the Dolphins. He also had a passer rating of 104.8 in the regular season, which for the early 70s is, I don't know, like somebody putting up a 120 passer rating nowadays. Also, Staubach is a troop, so if you disagree with my selection here, you're saying that you hate the troops. Just just something to think of. Dallas Cowboys, Mike McCarthy. Without a doubt, the sexiest head coach in the NFL. McCarthy enters year four in Big D, and although the Cowboys won a playoff game last season against Tom Brady, which sent him into retirement, other than that, there really isn't much to show for McCarthy's tenure. The Cowboys have been pretty good in the regular season each of the last two years, indicating that there's a lot of talent on this roster. But Jared Jones and the Cowboys organization are desperate to get back to a conference championship game for the first time since Bill Clinton was getting blow jobs in the Oval Office. And if McCarthy fails to do that again this year, I could see him getting the boot. I have his hot seat ranking at a 3.5 out of 5. Dallas Cowboys. There's so much low-hanging fruit for material that I could use here as an Eagles fan, like the NFC Championship game drought, or how much Dak and Romo sucked in big moments. But you Cowboys fans are used to that, so I'll give you something that I know will trigger most of you. Are you ready for it? Here you go. Jerry Jones is a really good owner. Oh yes, I can hear you seething now. He has given you the best stadium in the entire league. He's helped give your team more exposure than anybody else, regardless of results. He's kept the Cowboys cheerleaders as the league standard, honestly his best accomplishment, and in all honesty, built really great teams. Just look at the Cowboys track record of talent over the last 15 to 20 years. Tony Romo, Dak, Zeke Elliott, DeMarco Murray, Terrell Owens, Des Bryant, C.D. Lamb, Amari Cooper, Jason Witten, Zach Martin, Tyron Smith, Travis Frederick, Andre Giroud, Flozell Adams, Leonard Davis, Demarcus Ware, Jay Ratliff, Micah Parsons, Demarcus Lawrence, Terrace Newman, Trevon Diggs, Sean Lee, Roy Williams. That's a lot of good players. Way more than what most teams can say. Yet you ungrateful Dallas fans pretend Jerry is worse than Dan Snyder. Your team's lack of playoff success since 96 is not because of Jerry Jones. He's just a convenient scapegoat for all of you. Now, don't get me wrong. Jones is a piece of shit and I trust him about as far as I could throw him, but he's done his job well. Still, being 0-7 in the divisional round since Tupac died is a hilarious stat and I personally love Dallas Cowboys. The term cowboy is making light and making fun of closeted gay men as portrayed in the movie Brokeback Mountain with Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal back in 2005. Making fun of
of closeted gay people who happen to be cowboys is not funny.